Hello dear students, I hope you are doing well and have been enjoying the QR code scanning. So today in this lecture, we are going to start another chapter, chapter number 3, the cell. So here are the learning outcomes to differentiate between unicellular and multicellular organisms with their examples, cell structure of both the types, plants and animals, identification and functions of some cell organelles, Distinguish between the diagrams of a plant cell and an animal cell. Here is a brief introduction of a cell. So cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life or it is called as the building block of our life also because each and every organism present on this earth is made up of many types of cells, millions or billions of cells. So that there are some types of living organisms but based on the number of cells present like there are some unicellular organisms which are made up of only one cell they are made up of only one cell they are unicellular uni means one and cellular means the presence of cell so they are microscopic, they are very small that we can't see them with our naked eyes. So a special instrument that is microscope is needed to observe them. So some examples are unicellular animals, amoeba, paravicium, on and euglena. Unicellular plants are chlamydominus, bacteria, yeast multicellular organisms so multicellular here multi means many and cellular means cells so they are made up of many cell many cells or many types of cells so they all perform different functions and examples are plants animals and humans also come in the list of animals so there is a hierarchy that that is the group of cells when the group of cells combine it forms tissues and when the tissues combine with each other they form an organ when many organs combine and perform some uh, functions they form an organ system and when many um, or multiple organ systems are combined they form an organism or a body of human or plant or animal so here are some examples given like tissues for examples for example muscle tissue when such muscle tissues or many muscle tissues are combined they form an organ that is stomach and when uh, there are many glands or many organs which are involved in our digestion so when uh, such organs are involved they form together a digestive system and now you can consider it as the bricks for example there is a huge building and that huge building is made up of small small units known as bricks same you can compare our body with uh, the huge building for example there are some bricks and those bricks when combined they form wall in our home and when more than one two three four Walls are combined, they form a room. And when two or more rooms combine, they form a house. And more, uh, and when two or more houses combine, they form a society or the entire society. Now, come to the cell shape. So, there are many types of shapes of the cells present in our body. And they all perform different functions and they are well adapted to perform different functions also for example this is the shape of our muscle cell this is the shape of our blood cells this is the shape of our nerve cell and this is the shape of the sperm cell plus this is the shape of our skin cell now different cells have a variety of shapes in order to perform some particular functions 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल आर पी सीज रेड ब्लड कॉर्पस्कल्स और रेड ब्लड सेल्स दे आर डिस्क शेप्ड दे आर डिस्क शेप्ड टू कैरी आउट द ऑक्सीजन थ्रू आउट आर बॉडी सो दैट दीज कैपिलर सो दैट दीज आर बी सीज कैन इजीली गो थ्रू दीज ब्लड कैपिलरीज एंड रीच आउट टू ईच एंड एवरी पार्ट ऑफ आर बॉडी नेक्स्ट इज डब्ल्यू बी सीज सो डब्ल्यू बी सीज और वाइट ब्लड कॉर्पस्कल्स और वाइट ब्लड सेल्स दीज आर अमीबॉइड और इरेगुलर इन शेप This is just to squeeze themselves through the blood vessels. So WBCs have the capability to squeeze themselves through the blood capillaries and reach out to the surface of skin or near the surface of skin in case of any infection or allergy. Next is cell size. So uh, there are different sizes of a cell. The largest cell is the ostrich egg longest is the nerve cell present in our human body and smallest cell is of mycoplasma which is a bacteria which is a bacterium so uh, bacteria is a plural for bacterium and very small cells present in our human body are red blood cells now come to the another topic cell theory so cell theory there are three postulates of cell theory first it's important to know that who gave uh, this cell theory or three postulates of cell theory so uh, there were two biologists schleiden and schwann who together uh, make some contribution to give some postulates of cell theory and according to the cell theory all living organisms or living things are made up of cells and cells are the very basic fun functional and structural units of our life number 2 cells are the basic unit of structure in all organisms number 3 cells only come from pre existing cells and this statement was further explained by virchow 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 was a biologist cells only come from pre existing cells what does it mean that for example there is a cell and when the cell division occurs in this particular type of cell it gives rise to two daughter cells right and when the cell division occurs in this particular type of daughter cell it again divides into two it again divides into two it again divides into two so uh, this cycle this chain continues so we can say that this cell arises from this pre existing cell and this cell arises from this pre existing cell so this was the statement given by virchow next come to the another topic that is discovery of cell so cells were first seen by or first observed by antony van leeuwenhoek under the simple microscope which was developed by himself only so this was the simple microscope developed by antony van leeuwenhoek and this was the biologist antony van leeuwenhoek and yes one more important thing or a thing or interesting thing to know that antony van leeuwenhoek is known as the father of microbiology father of microbiology so microbiology includes the study of microbes like bacteria virus fungi etc the cells were first seen or observed by antony van leeuwenhoek but later the term cell that was given by robert hooke so he was a biologist he observed the slices of dead cork under his microscope so dead cork means uh, it is the part of the bark of the trees and these corks were like uh, the box like compartments piled up together if you could see in this picture given here uh, there are some box like compartments and he gave the term cell he coined the term cell to these box like compartments now cytology here logy means study and cyto means cell 
the study of cells is known as cytology now come to the parts of a cell a cell consists of three parts mainly cell membrane cytoplasm and nucleus cytoplasm and nucleus together they are known as protoplasm this is the living material now come to the cell membrane part so cell membrane is also known as plasma membrane it is the thin covering of a cell it is present in both the types of cells whether it is a plant cell or an animal cell it possesses tiny holes so tiny holes are present uh, to facilitate the exchange of materials present in and out of the cell so this is the cell membrane structure if you magnify uh, this part this cell membrane part then it looks like this so this is the detailed structure of a membrane of this membrane now come to the functions so cell membrane or plasma membrane performs these functions number 1 this membrane provides protection so since this membrane is present outside uh, like in case of animal cells only cell membrane is the outermost membrane so it provides protection to the inner parts of the cells number 2 it gives shape to the cell number 3 it helps to exchange different materials in and out of the cell with the help of some tiny holes present over the surface of this membrane next it is semi permeable so it allows only certain substances or things to come in and out of the cell next is the cell wall cell wall is only present in a plant cell it is not present in an animal cell it is not present in an animal cell cell wall surrounds the cell membrane it is made up of cellulose type of material so basically there are different substances with the help of which the cell wall is made up of for example in case of a fungi the cell wall is made up of a special material known as lignin but in case of a plant the cell wall is made up of a different material known as cellulose so this is the cell wall which is the outermost layer and um inner to the cell wall cell membrane is present but cell wall is only present in a plant cell it is not present in an animal cell but cell membrane is present in both both plants and animals now come to the functions of the cell wall cell wall provides rigidity and protection to the cell since it is the outermost part it allows substances to enter and leave the cell now come to the another part that is cytoplasm so if uh, you could see this uh, wide blank space this comprises of the cytoplasm cytoplasm is a jelly like uh, ground substance so cytoplasm is a jelly like ground substance and it is present in the space between cell membrane and nucleus the space which i have just shown you cytoplasm contains many cell organelles these cell organelles are basically known as the organs of the cell this small small things present in the cell inside the cell and they perform different tasks so these are the cell organelles so cell organelles are present in the space present uh, that is cytoplasm and there are some functions which are performed by the cytoplasm number 1 movement of genetic material genetic material could be dna and the products of cellular respiration within the cell number 2 it gives shape to the cell number 3 it dissolves the waste product since it is jelly like next part is nucleus so next is nucleus and the plural of nucleus is nucleoli in this diagram if you could see this part so this is the nucleus okay and over the surface of nucleus some pores are present some pores are also present over the surface of nucleus and these pores are known as nucleopores and these pores 
allow the exchange of materials in and out of the nucleus. So, a nucleus is surrounded by the cytoplasm and nucleus is known as the boss of the cell, the brain house of the cell or control house of the cell since it controls many activities of a cell. So, nucleus is a spherical body and it is made up of there are four parts of a nucleus. Number one, nuclear membrane. Number two, nucleoplasm or nuclear sap. Number three, nucleolus or nucleoli. Next is chromatin. So, nuclear membrane is the outermost covering of the nucleus and tiny holes are also present. So, in this diagram, if we could see the nucleus is enclosed by a nuclear envelope and uh, we have already discussed that some pores are present over the surface of the nuclear membrane. Next, nucleoplasm or nuclear sap, it is a jelly-like fluid and chromatin and nucleoli, these both are present in the nucleoplasm or the nuclear sap and so this light pink colored space outside this spherical body, this blank space, light pink shaped space, this is the nuclear sap, nuclear sap which is filled by a fluid and inside this fluid chromatin is present and nucleoli is also present. This spherical body inside the nucleus is nucleoli. This round shaped body is nucleoli and it is present inside the nucleus and nucleoli is responsible for protein synthesis in a cell. There are some other cell organelles also involved in protein synthesis for example ribosome but inside the uh, nucleus nucleoli is responsible for protein synthesis. Next nucleoli or nucleolus this we have already covered. Next chromatin. So, chromatin are the fibers or thread like structures which is present inside the nucleus okay or in uh, the space present in the nucleus that is nuclear sap and once the cell division occurs in the chromatin fibers, they are converted into chromosomes and chromosomes possess some hereditary characters. So, chromosomes possess some hereditary characters which pass on uh, from uh, the parents to their generation or from uh, the parents to their offsprings. For example, hair color, eye color, um, gene of uh, the height, etc. So, uh, chromatin fibers or uh, these thread like structures are present here in this space which is known as the nuclear sap. I hope the structure of nucleus is clear to you. Okay, uh, let us brief once the structure of nucleus. So, the structure of nucleus, uh, it, compo it is composed of the nuclear envelope which is present very outside of the nucleus and over the surface of nuclear envelope some tiny holes or pores are present for the uh, exchange of materials in and out of the cytoplasm to nucleus, nucleus to cytoplasm and the space present inside the nucleus is known as nuclear sap and a spherical body which is responsible for protein synthesis inside the nucleus is known as nucleoli and in the surface present here like uh, in the nuclear sap chromatin fibers are present and chromatin fibers get converted into chromosomes once the cell division occurs and these are the hereditary units uh, which pass on from parents to their generation. So, the nucleus is responsible for transmission of characters from parents to their offspring. Next, nucleus controls all the activities in a cell. So, therefore, it is known as brain house of the cell. Next, there are some other cell organelles present in the cytoplasm of a cell. So, uh, this white space, this jelly like space is the cytoplasm and in the cytoplasm, some cell organelles or, or the small, small organs of the cell, uh, organs of the cell float inside this blank space that is in the cytoplasm and those small, small organs or cell organelles are uh, mitochondria, lysosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, etc. So, uh, these are the cell organelles 
माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया एंडोप्लास्मिक रेटिकुलम गोलगी अपेरेटस और गोलगी कॉम्प्लेक्स और गोलगी बॉडीज लाइजोजोम्स सेंट्रोजोम प्लास्टर्स राइबोजोम्स वैक्यूल सो दीज ऑल आर द सेल ऑर्गेनल्स प्रेजेंट इन द स्पेस नोन एज द साइटोप्लाज्म नाउ दीज आर सम ऑफ द सेल ऑर्गेनल्स द लोकेशन इज रिटर्न दैट वेदर दे आर प्रेजेंट इन द प्लांट सेल और एनिमल सेल और इन बोथ दिस इज द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर and these are the functions so let's see cell wall it is located in only plant cell in only a plant cell cell wall is the outer layer it is rigid strong stiff and non living its function is to protect and support the cell it allows water and oxygen to pass through cell membrane is present in both uh if cell membrane is present in plant it is inside the cell wall and it if in if it is present in animal cell it is the outer layer and cell membrane controls what comes in and out of the cell nucleus is present in both it is rounded shape surrounded by rest of the organelles it controls the cell activities therefore it is known as a brain house of the cell cytoplasm is present in both it is a clear gel like fluid its function is that it holds many cell organelles mitochondria it is present in both the types of cells plant and animal cell but in case of the animal cells these are many in case of the animal cells mitochondria are many in number mitochondria is a bean shaped structure and in it possesses two membranes inner and outer membrane let me show you the diagram of the mitochondria so this is the diagram of mitochondria it is known as the power house of the cell because it provides power to the cell or it provides energy to the cell to perform the various functions next mitochondria breaks down sugar molecules to create energy so energy requirement is fulfilled by the mitochondria in our cell next is endoplasmic reticulum it is also present in both the types of cells and the uh, endoplasmic reticulum forms the network of folded tubes or membranes let me show you so these are the folded membranes like this folded membranes so uh, there are some cell organelles present in the cell and particularly in the cytoplasm they float inside the cytoplasm right so uh, there are some cell organelles number one mitochondria the singular of mitochondria is mitochondrion one is mitochondrion and more than one are mitochondria so this is known as the power house of the cell because it provides power or energy to the cell to perform various metabolic activities so if you could see the diagram the mitochondria are the small and rod shaped structures rod shaped organelles uh, mitochondria are surrounded by double membrane there are two membranes outer and inner membrane uh, an inner membrane is folded into finger like uh, finger like structures which are known as cristae next comes uh, endoplasmic reticulum we can write down er in short and it forms a network of membranes tube like structures like this okay and uh, these are present throughout the cytoplasm the outer surface of the membrane is either rough or smooth depending upon the presence or absence of ribosomes right for example if ribosomes are present so the presence of ribosomes make their surface rough and if ribosomes are absent so the surface of endoplasmic reticulum would be smooth next is golgi complex or golgi bodies or golgi apparatus so it consists of stacks of thin flat membranes if you could see there are the stacks of thin flat membranes called cisternae please don't get confused with these two terms cristae and cisternae cisternae is a term given for golgi complex or golgi bodies and cristae is the term given for the mitochondria so cristae and some small vesicles are also present golgi complex or golgi bodies are absent in mature rbcs and sperms 
Now, next cell organelle is lysosome. So, lysosomes are present in both plants and animal cells, but uh, not in uh, every uh, type of plant cells these are present. For example, yeast and some fungi possess lysosomes. So, lysosomes are the small spherical bodies which contain enzymes and those enzymes are capable to digest various cell materials and once they digest uh, the cell materials, they destroy themselves. So, therefore, they are known as suicide bags. Next, cell organelles are centrosomes. So, centrosomes are only present in the animal cells and they are involved in cell division. Cell division or cell multiplication. So, these are uh, the small structures near the nucleus. Two tiny granules, centrioles, are present in it. Inside the centrosome, the structure of centrosome, two centrioles are present. Next type of cell organelle is known as the chloroplast. Chloroplast is present in the plant cell only in the plant cell. It is not present in the animal cells and it is known as the kitchen house of the cell because it helps in the process of photosynthesis to take place. So, it is written here that it is present only in the plant cells, contains the green pigment called chlorophyll. So, therefore, this green pigment chlorophyll helps to uh, trap the sunlight and helps in the process of photosynthesis that is the process in which the plant prepares their own food. They are large and oval shaped. They show two regions, brown substance which is known as stroma, this blank space, this is known as stroma, in which flat membrane like structures called grana are present. So, these are the grana or granum, these structures are present in the stroma. And granum contains chlorophyll, which we have already discussed. Next type of cell organelle is ribosome. A number of ribosomes could be present in a cell and their main function is to synthesize protein in a cell. Next cell organelle is vacuole. So, vacuoles are larger in plant cells while absent or very small sized in the animal cells. So, vacuoles consist of two main parts, tonoplast, tonoplast is the outer membrane of vacuoles, outer membrane of the vacuoles and the cell sap, cell sap is the fluid present inside the vacuole. So, basically the function of vacuole is uh, to store the food and water. So, in reference to the vacuole, there is a difference between plant cell and an animal cell. So, if you could see uh, the vacuoles, uh, the presence of vacuoles in an animal cell, the vacuoles are very small in size. But in case of a plant cell, the vacuole is very prompt and uh, it could be only one and large vacuole. So, several small vacuoles are present in an, in an animal cell. So, uh, uh, vacuoles are used for the storage and can contain nutrients, water or waste products. In plant cell, there, uh, there is only one vacuole present and that one vacuole would be uh, very large or prompt. It is used to store water and push against the cell wall and it keeps the plant rigid. Basically, it is pushed against the cell wall because it is very prompt. Okay. So, it basically press the cell wall. The next type of cell organelles is plastids are double membrane bond structures and found in the cytoplasm of plant cells only, not in an animal cell. There are three types of plastids present, number one chloroplast, number two chromoplast and number three leucoplast. In chloroplast, here chloro means chlorophyll and here chloro means chlorophyll or green in color, right? So, these types of plastids are uh, responsible for giving green color, right? And chromo, chromo means colorful. So, uh, there are some different colors also, uh, orange, red, purple, violet, etc. And leucoplast, here leuco means white or 
colorless. So, best example would be potato. Let us discuss each of them in more detail. So, chloroplasts, these are green in color due to, the, due to the presence of a green pigment called chlorophyll and this pigment helps in photosynthesis. Chromoplasts contain colored pigments other than green like I said you earlier red, yellow or orange which give color to some flowers or fruits. Leucoplasts, these are colorless or white, they do not contain any pigment at all, they store starch, proteins and oils. So, leucoplasts are further divided into three types according to, uh, on the basis of the storage of starch, protein or oils but uh, that much description is not given in your syllabus. The, uh, those types you will study in your higher classes. Next vacuoles, vacuoles are present in amoeba and they contain food particles and they are known as food vacuoles. So, the food vacuoles are basically the vacuoles in which only there is the storage of food and rest of uh, rest about the vacuoles we have already covered. So, there are some differences between a plant cell and an animal cell. So, plant cells are usually larger and animal cells are usually smaller or comparatively smaller. In a plant cell, cell wall is present plus plasma membrane is also present. Animal cell, in an animal cell only cell membrane is present but cell wall is absent. In a plant cell, plasma desmata is present and in the animal cells, plasma desmata are absent. So, basically plasma desmata are the connections uh, through which uh, the movement of uh, substances take place. So, these are the small connections. In plant cells, chloroplasts are present uh, which are responsible for photosynthesis to take place and therefore, they are known as kitchen house of the cell, chloroplast or plastid. Animal cells, chloroplasts are absent in an animal cell. The vacuoles are large and permanent or prompt you can say and in case of an animal cell the vacuoles are very small and temporary. In plant cell tonoplast is present around the vacuole this we have already seen. In an animal cell tonoplast is absent. In the plant cell centrioles are absent except motile cells of lower plants. Animal cells so, in motile cells of lower plants and in animal cells, centrioles are present and they help in cell division. In plant cells, nucleus is present along the periphery of the cell, periphery to the margin and in an animal cell, nucleus is at the center of the cell and they are very small also. Lysosomes are rare in case of a plant cell and lysosomes are many in case of an animal cell. Storage material is starch grains in case of a plant cell and in case of an animal cell the storage material is a glycogen granules. There is one uh, more major difference uh, the presence of mitochondria. Mitochondria are present in both but they are fewer in number in case of the plant cells and they are many in number in case of an animal cell. So, uh, this is the comparison that plant cells contain cell wall, large vacuole, chloroplast and flagella only in gametes. Animal cells, there is no cell wall, there is a small or no vacuole present. No chloroplast are present in case of an animal cell since the process of photosynthesis does not take place in case of an animal cell. So, uh, the presence of flagella is there in case of an animal cell and it helps in locomotion that is the movement from one place to another. And in both mitochondria are present but in case of an animal cell Mitochondria are many in number and in case of a plant cell they are very few in number. Volga apparatus is also present in both rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, 
nucleus, cytoplasm and ribosomes. These all are present or these all are common in both. 